Hi, I'm Darren. These are my hands. And this is a Gru lunchbox. So I've got to start this video with a huge thanks going out to friend of the channel, Tom from the nation's capital, who sent me a Gru care package this past week that included this Gru lunchbox in it, as well as some other pretty neat stuff that I'm excited to show off to you. But when he sent it my way, he said, oh, you're going to be surprised with what's in this package. He didn't tell me what it was. And, well, let me just show you what happened when I got the mail. Okay, friend of the channel, Tom from Ottawa, now this is weird, sent me this box. And, you know, when I looked at it, in the email that he sent me, it's, it looked like, you know, a box of comics. But when I received it, look how thick it is. And, you know, it doesn't weigh like you would expect a box of comics to weigh. He said that this was going to be a surprise, and I don't know what's in it. But I'll tell you, that does not sound like comics. And uh, let's open it up. I have a suspicion of what's in it, but I don't know. Uh, let's see what we got here. Come on. Do you think it's what I think it is? Uh, okay. This is Ben's. Come on. Here we go. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's a box of Quaker Oats. Nice. Thanks, Tom. Open it from the side. Let's see what we got here. Slice and slice. Ah, oh, man. Whatever this is, thank you very much. I don't know what it is. I think I might know what it is. Uh, I've got a suspicion. Bag and oh man, it is. Ah, oh, thank you. My goodness, Tom. This is so cool. What's this? Another thing. Hey, right on. Magnore. And an envelope. Oh, yeah. oh, look at that. This is so cool. Thank you very much. This is great. Okay, we can get back to this in just a second. That is so cool. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what's in here. Okay, come on. Take the envelope out and... All right, what do we got here? Ooh, look at that. What is this? That's cool. I don't know what this thing is. I like it. Okay. Ah. Uh -huh. Magnor. Cane card. And Grew Lunchbox. Thank you very much, Tom. That's wonderful. So thanks again very much, Tom, for sending this to the channel. Let me tell you a little history about this Gru lunchbox. Not this particular Gru lunchbox especially, but the Gru lunchbox in general. This lunchbox was produced by Dark Horse Comics towards the end of 1999. It measures about eight inches in this direction, about seven and three quarter inches this way, and it's narrower in the depth dimension. If you can find the old Dark Horse website where they were announcing this lunchbox, you will be astounded to find that they were asking only $14.99 for this treasure. That's amazing! And it also came with a really neat postcard, which of course is highly sought after by collectors. Now, what do we have on this Gru lunchbox? Well, the front features a drawing by Sergio, of course, of Gru and Referto enjoying a little bit of a cookout. And there's this army behind the bushes looking at Gru and Referto, looking at Gru as he is enjoying some warm pork Hey, when have we known Gru to refuse a tasty bit of warm pork? Anyway, 
these guys in the army are looking hungry, they're looking sad, and Referto here, he's giving them the old stare down, kind of like saying, this is my buddy Gru's warm pork. You guys stay over there, stay away from the warm pork. It's for us, not you. Up in the top left corner, we've got the Gru logo in a banner that is somewhat reminiscent of the banner that was being used on the Gru and Referto miniseries covers. Let me just grab that. Yeah, you see, when Gru went to Dark Horse, Sergio started drawing the Gru logo with this nice, I don't know, paper banner kind of background on it. And then when Gru and Referto came out, he started drawing it with this tattered edge. I don't know, maybe it kind of looks a little bit like a flag or something like that. Let me show you what the actual covers of the individual comics look like. You know, I don't have the Gru and Referto floppy comics. I just have this trade paperback and I'll be okay. But you can see how the title block uses this nice wavy banner, almost like I said, flag type looking edge to it. Very similar with the Gru lunchbox here. And just in case you're wondering, that's that's not a chicken leg. There's no sort of discrepancy between the pig on the spit and what Gru is eating. Look, there's the hoof. Gru is eating some delicious warm pork. On the back of the lunchbox, Sergio has drawn a collection of, I don't know what you'd want to call them, not the most famous, not the most prominent, I don't know, the closest Gru friends. We've got Arbor de Carpa, we've got... Gruella and the Minstrel, with Dragon on the end of his loot. We've got Pal and Drum. We've got Arcadio. Captain Ahax is hanging out back there, along with Taranto. Chakal, of course, the Sage, Referto, and Mulch. And just like on the front, Sergio has indicated that he has drawn this in 1999. The fine print at the bottom says, Gru, copyright 1999, Sergio Aragonez, made in China, darkhorse.com. Something that I think is kind of funny, kind of cute, kind of weird to look at is Gru's face here because this is one of those times where Sergio has drawn Gru's eyes both kind of on the same side of his nose. So his nose isn't bisecting his eyes. They're just kind of on one side of his face and it's like his nose is on the other side of the face. And it's kind of a, a goofy looking look for Gru. It's, it's funny. It, like I said, it's kind of cute almost too. It's comical. I like it, but it, it stands out to me as uh, just some different looking eyes for our wanderer. Around the sides and the bottom of the lunchbox is kind of this wrap around mural thing. Maybe I'll show you the top first. We've got dark horse embossed on the handle with the, the dark horse kind of a chess horse knight logo on either side. If we start at this side, what we've got is we've got Gru battling this army. And so there's this guy over here, he's been dispatched already. Oof, he says as he hits the ground and Gru is slicing into the crowd over here. Uh, this guy's shield is sliced in half. This guy is grabbing at his guts. Maybe he's already felt the wrath of Gru's sword. And as we kind of rotate around, People are thinking, you know, maybe we'll get, get away from Gru here. Some folks are pushing people to the front of the fray. Other folks are running away totally. Now let's go over to this side. And we've got Referto charging in from the other side. And he's got his growl happening. Look at his teeth. I like those teeth on Referto. He's chomping down. He's ready to, ready to fight, ready to do some ankle biting, I think. And the... Soldiers at the front of the line are saying, yikes, this dog's going to get me. Get out of my way. And again, like on the other side, okay, there's some people um, just kind of aimlessly wandering through here, but the soldiers are running away. And on the back, we see the two armies are just kind of meeting in the middle and crashing into each other. And it's just a funny scene. You got Gru attacking from one side, you've got Referto attacking from the other, mayhem in the middle. And there's this lady here carrying this bottle, and we've got the Dark Horse comics, kind of that Maverick logo down there at the bottom. It's a funny, cool, 
wraparound gag. Let me show you inside my lunchbox. It's a mess. If you haven't already noticed, there's there's some rust happening on the edges of my lunchbox, and there's bits of rust on the inside too. But I wanted to show you this because I want you to see the color of the metal on the inside. It's kind of this, uh, I don't know, coppery, goldy colored. And you can see where the GRU logo is embossed into the front of the lunchbox. So that's kind of neat if you didn't notice that. When we were looking it at the front, it uh, yeah, it's just kind of that raised embossed thing there, and it's it's really nice. Adds a nice little touch to it. So why did Tom send this to me? I think he sent it to me because I was mentioning, you know, just last video about the advertisement for the Gru lunchbox in the back of Sergio Stomp's Star Wars, and that got me thinking about okay. This is like drawn in 1999. Sergio Stomp Star Wars is the beginning of 2000. When did this come out? Well, according to the Dark Horse website, this was released on November 24th, 1999. And I was wondering, you know, when would the very first advertisements for this lunchbox have shown up in the comic books? So obviously we've got January 2000 with this uh, potent pails for potent potables, the latest in a series of lunchboxes from Dark Horse, now available. We've got the Gru lunchbox. We've got milk and cheese lunchbox here. But were there any ads before this? My gut was telling me, yes, yes, there were. Now, as I said, I don't have the floppy comics for Gru and Refer to right now, so I can't check to be sure whether or not this lunch box, this lunch pail, was advertised in Gruen Referto, but I don't think it was because Gruen Referto came out in 1998. That would be way too early for advertisements for the lunch pail to be in the comics. Um, the ads are not included in this trade paperback, so I can't show you that they're not in there, but uh, even though this came out, the trade paperback came out in 2000. Grun Referto was coming out way earlier than that. The end of 98, the beginning of 99, I believe. So that's almost a year ahead of this. Doesn't make sense. But here we have Gru, Mightier Than the Sword, issue number one. This came out in January of 2000 as well. That's the publication date. And if we take a look in the back here, look at that. Don't go too far, lunchbox. We've got the same ad in here as well, but it's actually not quite the exact same ad. This here says coming in November versus now available. So I think we would have seen the very first ad for the Gru Lunch Pails in Gru Mightier Than the Sword issue number one with the cover date of January 2000. So man, if you ever seen these ads, Back in the day, you'd be thinking, man, I got to get myself a Gru lunchbox. And when it came out and it was only $14.99, you'd be saying, wow, what a deal. And I got a postcard too. Wait a second. Check out all this other great Gru gear that you could buy in 2000. We've got the Gru cold cast porcelain ornament. It's by Moore Creations. It's only $25.90, including shipping in the USA. Wow. And then down at the bottom here, Graffiti Designs is, is selling these Gru pins. And of course, the Cheese Dip statue, the Life of Gru. They call it a graphic album, maybe graphic novel, whatever. It was a great time for some Gru stuff. Get yourself a Gru t-shirt. Super awesome stuff happening. The turn of the millennium when you're collecting Gru stuff. And I mentioned the postcard. Let's take a quick look at the postcard here. We've got the image from the back of the lunchbox. And you know, it makes me wonder if Sergio ever had a definitive list of the, like the most important Gru characters. You know, those closest to Gru. I bet you I could do a entire video on that. And in addition to the Gru lunchbox, Let's see if I can do this. I'll put some pictures over here. In 
2015, Sergio Aragonez made another awesome lunchbox. This time it was for the, please forgive me, O-I-J-A. It's not Ouija, it's Ojai, you know, the town where Sergio lives. They grow tangerines there, pixie tangerines in particular, and in 2015, they produced a metal lunchbox not too dissimilar from the Gru lunchbox. And Sergio did the art for this, and this is a great looking lunchbox. And Sergio loves his local tangerines, at least according to the website. Can you believe they were selling this for 30 bucks? On the front of the lunchbox, we see the town of Oh, hi! <laughs> it's overflowing with these pixie tangerines. And on the back, we've got pixies themselves, like the little fairy guys and girls, picking the tangerines with all of their animal friends. And just like on the Gru lunchbox with the wraparound art, the Oh, hi, pixie tangerines lunchbox has this wraparound image of people harvesting, delivering, and selling tangerines at the Ojai Farmer's Market. See, you can't make fun of me for saying Ojai wrong now. <laughs> oh, it's guaranteed to be pronounced wrong because I'm saying Ojai so much. The dates on the front and the side and the back indicate that Sergio was drawing the art for this particular lunchbox in 2014 and 2015 showed up on the website in 2015 and it was available when you were mail ordering your 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 tangerines but i checked and y you can't get it anymore if you want to buy one of these tangerine lunch boxes you can get it on ebay right now there's one going for 140 dollars and the grew lunch box one sold in march of 2023 for only 40 bucks there's one on auction right now for like a little over $100, and it's got the postcard on it. And I've even seen people selling lunchbox with the PVC figurines in it as well. And that would be a great combo deal if you felt like picking something up like that and spending a bunch of money. So I'm not going to spend hours and hours trying to clean up this lunchbox and turning it into a video, but... I am going to give it a, a little spray down with some simple green and see if I can just get rid of some of the, the scunge on it just so I can show you just how beautiful it really is. Like the art here really is very nice. Like it's in good shape. Oh yeah, and that stuff smells great. It smells like licorice. You know, I've talked many times about how I like to collect things and how I treat my collection. And while I like to take care of my stuff, I, I don't know, I'm not super duper precious about things. You know, this is a neat lunchbox. I'm so thankful to Tom for sending this in. You know, yeah, it's not in like absolutely pristine condition, but, but who cares? It looks like it's been loved. It looks like it's been played with to me. And that's great. And I don't mind that it is not in super awesome condition because from a distance, it looks really cool. And I'm gonna have one of these things up on my wall. And that's just really super duper awesome. So, you know, clean it down here a bit. Get some of the scunge off of it. You know, maybe I'll, I'll grab some fine gauge steel wool and, and try to buff out some of the rust around the edges. But it's not really that big of a deal to me. This is, this is cool the way it is. And if I look like I'm a bit of a mendicant as I'm trying to clean this up, it's because I'm working around my, my microphone here too. You know, one problem is now that I've actually got one of these in my hands, it's like, I think I really would like to have one that's in super awesome condition. So now am I going to be spending a ton of money on eBay? No. Well, that came out really nice. And that's going to look super awesome on my wall. Thanks, Tom. In case you're wondering, it's called Simple Green. I don't know. Maybe it's a Canadian thing. I'm not sure. But there was more in the box as well, right? This is the Mighty Mangor. Mangor. I have a hard time saying Magnor. 
and I always want to say Mangor, like mangoes or something like that. It's the Mighty Mango, issue number one from Malibu Comics, Sergio Aragonez and Mark Evanier, 1993. You know, I think one of these days I should just take, I don't know, a month's worth of videos and we should just go through the Mighty Magnor, but not today. Thank you, Tom, for sending this along. And then there's this. Well, I had to look this up. This is Kane, drawn by Sergio Aragonez. And this card is part of Neil Gaiman's Sandman trading card set by Skybox Cards. This set of cards came out in 1984, and Kane is number 51 of 90 cards. We can see Kane on the front here. See, Sergio didn't draw all these cards. In fact, this is the only card that Sergio drew, and we'll kind of get into why in just a moment. On the front, you know, we've got Kane standing here with his... At first I thought, you know, is that like a helium balloon dragon? No, that's just his pet dragon, I guess, flying above him. He's standing amongst these skulls and bones. And in the background, is this the, the House of Mystery? I think? I really don't know much about Neil Gaiman's Sandman, but um, if you can... Just make it out there. It says Sandman, kind of in those purple clouds at the top. On the back, we read, Purveyor of Penny Dreadfuls, Shilling Shockers, Blood and Thunders, and First Rate Nightmares, Cain is caretaker of the House of Mystery, an old, dark mansion on the outer spiral of the dreaming. Gruff and petulant by nature, he nonetheless takes evident delight in sharing short, violent horror stories that end with unforeseen twists, in grooming his pet gargoyle Gregory, and, as a featured player in The First Story, in slaying his weaker brother Abel again and again and again. On his brow he wears a mark, etched there by his creator, that promises sevenfold vengeance to whosoever slays him. Front art, Sergio Aragonez. Back art, Kelly Jones. P. Craig Russell. In the Dreaming, Kane. DC Comics Vertigo Skybox. So somebody can tell me exactly what's going on with Neil Gaiman's Sandman and how Cain fits in. But I do recall that Abel, Cain's brother, is the comic host of the House of Secrets comic book. And I believe Cain is the kind of the host of the House of Mystery comic books. Karate, Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, I don't know what that is. The total self-defense system. Okay, I'm going to flip through this really quick so I can show you some Sergio. Kung Fu, I'll give you the secret power of... Good night, Ted, the dance was fun. Let's push this little guy around. Whack, back, snack, smack, flack. Gee, honey, Kung Fu is wonderful to know. Yes, and it's easy to learn fast. All right, Cain and Abel comic here by Sergio Aragonez. Okay, I believe that this is, is this Cain? Cain's got the glasses, right? He's a little bit taller, blowing up the TV set. What a shocker. They're running through the tunnel of horrors here, having a great time. Cain and his brother Abel, look at that, and they're going to go play tennis. They're not wearing their tennis whites. They're black as night. And look up here, see, I think that this is Abel. Of course, it's not Sergio drawing Abel, but I think this is the character, and I think that he's the host of this particular comic. Aha, and here we have some more Sergio. Abel's fables at the back here. A vampire sucking the blood. <laughs> Neptune, king of the sea. Getting a surfboard in the gut. Somebody playing a, a prank on their baby brother. Don't be half a man. And of course... Here we've got Plop Comics, Cain and Abel, and I don't know the name of the witch, but Sergio, of course, drawing. Here we've got Cain here kind of introducing the story, and I think that's kind of what these characters do. They are like 
part of the wraparound stories in these sort of horror comics. What do we got at the back? Anything? Yeah, we got Cain and Abel and the other witch. There's Cain right there. There's his brother Abel. So, this is pretty cool, this card. And it actually gives me a little bit more interest, incentive to actually look at some of Sergio's work in some horror comics. I'm not going to be jumping into it right away, I don't think, but it's just adding on to that pile that eventually I'm going to have to get to. One last thing I want to mention, Gru in the Wild, the next miniseries from Sergio is coming out this summer. Issue number one will be in comic book stores July the 12th. So make sure you are pre-ordering at least a few copies from your local comic book shop. And judging from the cover and the description, it looks like the theme might be species extinction, possibly related to climate change. You know, taking a look at those boats on the desert, or maybe it has to do with over-harvesting of resources. Don't quite know, but I'm looking forward to the comic. I'm sure you are too. And there's a fish on the cover, so that makes it extra awesome. One last time, big thanks to Tom for sending in this great stuff. If you want to see more cool Gru collectibles, you should check out this video right here, right now. Please subscribe and do all the other great things over here. Thank you for 1,000 subscribers. That's awesome. And if you are like a metal lunchbox, perhaps the algorithm thinks you should watch this video next. Take care, everyone.